Lord this morning. Father, we just thank you for, for your anointing that is in this place. I ask you, God, I ask you to bring from heaven what you have for your people today. Speak through me, Father, in the name of Jesus as I yield myself to you in Jesus' name, and I will give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise as you break down your word and show us truth this morning in Jesus' name. Be glorified, be honored, and draw all men's hearts close to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, this morning I'm going to start. I probably am never not going to get done. I don't even, no way near going to get done. But for the next couple Sunday mornings, I'm going to be speaking um, on trust the process. Trust the process. You know, I don't know about you, but so many times in church today, we are finding ourselves in our culture getting so caught up with everything that's going on in the world as it is that many times we um, we're exhorting we're uh, we're motivational speaking you know go team go you can do it you can make it and in in the middle of all that sometimes we lose sight of doctrine we lose sight of what the Bible is truly speaking to our hearts saying to us and I really think that you know um, a lot of a lot of life um, in the world we live in today has changed so dramatically because we are no longer in a world where uh, Jesus Christ is the main religion among a lot of people that we're with. There are a lot of different religions um, that are out there now and more so um, today than has ever been before. So it is very easy to um, exalt your own thoughts and your own opinions and your belief systems and literally think you're in line with God, but look at your Bible and say, whoa, 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 wait a minute. That's not what it says at all. And so we have to really uh, work on, as a people, becoming very doctrinally sound in this day and hour. Because, you know, the Bible tells us that in the last days, even the very elect are going to be deceived. I don't know about you, but that scares me. That scares me. Because the only way I know to keep that from happening is to say biblically accurate and biblically sound. To be able to back up the things that we're saying. Not saying things. Because there's a lot of sayings out there that sound good in church. They sound good in church, but they don't line up with the Word of God. Amen? And one thing that I know in 1 Peter 1.25 he tells us, it's the Word of the Lord that endures forever. It's not our opinion. It's not our little belief system that we have. It's not what grandma taught you. It's the word of the Lord. That is what is going to endure forever. It is the only thing that will fight through every storm with you. Amen. Everything else in your belief systems can be faulty. So that doctrinal truth of the things that are in the word of God has got to be our anchor. It's got to be what's down at the bottom. That when the wind starts to blow and the storms start to come and things in life happen that you don't understand. I was asked to do a, a Zoom meeting with a community study that's going on um, up in Columbus yesterday and the lady had said, I want you to talk about, like, why bad things happen. Like, I said, oh, wow, well, you know, give me an easy one. You know, give me an easy thing to talk about, you know, because that's the, the golden question is, why, God, why? I just, I don't understand this and I don't understand this. How did this happen? Why did this happen? And, you know, it was interesting because the Lord kind of gave me just a, a quick little answer to be able to say sometimes we demand answers of God when we need to do nothing more than turn and find that He is the answer. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We need to turn and find out He's the answer. Not demand the answers from Him of the things that we don't understand. But there are things that in this word that He spells out for us so clearly. And I want to um, speak this morning about how many of you know your walk with God is a process yes. you when you give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ you are saved amen you ask God to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you amen he redeemed you he paid a price for you he died on that cross so that you didn't
didn't have to pay the penalty for your sin. And so now you are born again as a believer because you believe in the finished work of the cross. You believe in what the blood of Jesus did for you, right? Amen. Amen? Amen. But how many of you know that our walk with God don't stop there? Yeah. Because if our walk with God stopped there, the minute you got saved, he would have just zapped you right up to heaven. You know, beam me up, Lord, here I'm going. Beam me up, Scotty. Amen? And But it doesn't work that way. And while we are here on this earth, we are walking as a three-part being. We have a spirit, which is what got born again when you asked Jesus Christ to become the Lord of your life. Before then, your spirit was dead. You're like, what do you mean my spirit was dead? It was your spirit, but it wasn't God's spirit. Amen? Because when you got saved, your spirit now became alive. Adam and Eve did all their damage in the Garden of Eden that we've all paid for and are still paying for. Amen? Because we live in a fallen, broken world. Okay? So, our spirit got saved. Amen? Our soul, which is our mind, our will, and our emotions, is in a process. Yes. Yes. It's in a process. It is being saved. It is becoming like Him. Amen? I don't know about you, but the day that I got saved, the next morning, I woke up feeling 100,000 pounds lighter on the outside and the inside, but my mind didn't change the way it thought immediately. Amen? I didn't, I mean, let's just put it this way. If you you would have put, and I would have had a hammer in my hand, and I would have smashed my finger the day after I got saved, you might have heard something come out of my mouth that shouldn't have come out of my mouth. But because just because I got saved didn't mean that those old habits, you know, that were gone, were totally gone. And so, here we are, we know that our spirit is saved, we know that our soul, our mind, our will, and our emotions, amen, has a process to go through. Our body as it ends up is just this I don't know, it's just this shell. It's what holds everything inside. Amen? And so there's a process uh, of God. And I want you to turn this morning to 1 Thessalonians 5. I'm going to read verse 23. Because I want to break down. How many of you have ever heard in church the word sanctification? I don't know about you, but I think sanctification for me was this is what I saw. Anytime I heard the word sanctification, I saw the Pentecost hairdo, no makeup, no rings, skirts down to here. Amen? And if you all can just look at me this morning, I do not fit that category. Amen? Don't fit that. I would not have done well in that circle because I love bling. And I always said, I know that Eve had bling in the garden. Amen? I know she had to have had some bling somewhere. So anyway, there is a process by which we are being sanctified as believers. And I want to kind of break it down this morning because honest to goodness sanctification it's a process it's a process it's not religion it's not being religious it's not trying to, to to look the part it's a work that is being done on the inside of us after we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and so let's just start with this verse 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says this now what when right now right now right here we start right now May the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. Yes. Not partially. You're not a little bit saved. You're not a little bit like Jesus. He wants to wholly sanctify you. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to look at this scripture a little bit this morning because a lot of people just want to make this religious. This isn't religious. This scripture is life. It's how we are to live our lives. Amen? If you look in the Passion Translation, it reads like this. Now may the God of peace and harmony set you apart. Make you completely holy. And may your entire being, spirit, soul, and body be kept completely flawless in the appearing of our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One. 
sanctify you completely. This is what God wants for you. When you literally sit and you get saved, you give your life to God, you can literally ask yourself the question, what, does, what is God after in my life? Has anybody ever thought that? Have you ever went to God? Uh, let me just put it in layman's terms. What do you want from me, God? What do you want from me? What do you want from me? Because depending on how we see ourselves, there's a thousand different answers to those questions. But what is God after? This verse tells us what God is after. He is after us to sanctify us holy. To make us, set us apart for His use. Why is it that God makes you take the high road every time? Why is it that you can't act like everybody else? Why is it that you can't think like other people? Why is it you why is it you're in church on Sunday morning instead of being out on a boat somewhere? Instead of being, you know, out. Why is it? What does he want from us? Yeah, come on. He's trying to make us holy. And it's not anything we can do on our own. It's a work that he has to do on the inside of us. And it's glorious when it's all said and done. But we have to remember, church, we are not of this world. And when we begin to have church and we act like that we're of this world, then that's when everything starts to sneak in. And all those little foxes start to come from everywhere. And you start allowing things to penetrate into you that are of this world and are not of God. And they don't come in all at one time. They sneak in. Amen? Just just like Andy said, what does a thief do? It sneaks in. And so that's what happens in our lives. But we are not of this world. And when you got saved, he called you to an entirely different lifestyle. Thank you, Lord. Yes. That's why I come to church when the doors are open. Why? Because my lifestyle changed. Now, in that, if you just are a religious person, you think, oh, wow, how boring. You have to come to church every time the doors are open. No. When you truly know Jesus... When you truly get touched by the Holy Spirit, you'll run to the house of God because you can't wait to see what He's doing next. Why? Because He's after you in your life and there's nothing any more satisfying than having God right at the center of everything that you are and everything that you do. There is nothing in this world that can satisfy us. There is no person, there's no animal, there's no child, there's no spouse, there's nothing that can satisfy you like Jesus Christ can satisfy us. Amen? And so to be in his house, come on, I, I, I like to go home. <laughs> when I've been gone all day, I like to go home. When I've been out in this world all week, I like to come home. I like to come back into the house of God. And so he's got this process of what he's after. And I want to take the religious out of it. Amen. Because it's not about religion. It's just about that relationship and falling in love with him and, and wanting to do what he wants us to do. And it's about his love for you. He is not a God that's trying to take everything you think is fun away from you. He's a God that wants to fill you full of so much joy and happiness that you don't need any of those things anymore. Amen? That you think you needed to be happy. What is a process? Trust the process. Trust what God is wanting to do in us. What does that mean? A process is a series of actions or steps taken in order to achieve a particular end. We are going somewhere. We are on a journey. Okay? And so when he talks about the word sanctify, he's talking about setting you apart. Okay? I'm going to use it this way. When I pray over the services, I always say, Lord, in the service on Sunday morning, would you just sanctify that time and set it apart as holy? What does that mean when I say that? That means, Lord, we're not just coming in here to have a country club meeting. Yes. We're not just coming in here to fellowship with one another because I haven't seen Gigi and I haven't seen Jane. I haven't seen you all, all week long. It means we're coming in here with a holy purpose. Amen. We're coming in here wanting to hear from God. Wanting to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen? Amen? Wanting to fellowship together but a purpose because there's an end we want to achieve and that end we want to achieve is that we all look more like Jesus when it's all said and done. Amen? And so I understand that sanctification is about holiness but holiness is not about dress it's not about your hairdo it's not about your makeup it's not about any of those things holiness is about your identity yes. 
It's about who you are in Christ Jesus. That's what holiness really is. We try to fix up the outside, thinking that we're holy. And all we do is get frustrated and disappointed because we don't understand what true holiness really even is. And so when we look at it, there's a Greek word um, for sanctify. And it's I'm going to spell it for you. It's H-A-G-I-A-Z-O. You pronounce it however you want. Amen? Because I'm not no Greek scholar. And it, it means to set apart for God, which we've talked about. And it also means this. To make a person or thing the opposite of common. That's good. That's good. You are called as believers not to be common. We in the church are trying to fit in with a world that we don't even belong to as Christians. We're just passing through. And the seeker-friendly movement coming into the church took away sanctification. Because we began to look at things with a world view and we let those things leak in to our very being and all of a sudden now God's holiness can't be in the house because there's too much junk that we've let inside of our souls because he doesn't come because what's inside of us is unclean and can be unholy. But I'm telling you that as we go through this process and we learn to trust the process of what he wants to do in us, the safest place you can be is in the process of God. Amen. Doesn't mean you're perfect. I'm not perfect. I'm in so many different processes, it's unbelievable. About the time that I think that I've halfway arrived, I realize. In fact, I tell people this, the closer I get to God, the farther away I know I am. Because when I see him for who he really is, I begin to say, wow, you, wow, you got a long way to go, Karen. A long way to go. Amen? And so Paul in Corinthians, you know, he would tell the church, going back to the doctrine, he would tell the church, you know what? I can't even feed you with food. I'm still having to give you milk. Now, at the same time, he's calling them saints. He's calling them saints. But he's telling them, I can't even feed you with the food and the, the meat of the Word of God because you're still trying to swallow the milk and not spit it back up. Yeah. Wow. And so how does that happen? How, how can a saint be someone who's drinking milk? Wow. It's because of who you are in Christ Jesus. Yeah. When you got saved, you're now a saint. Yes. Amen. Amen? You're a saint. You're one of God's kids. But the process <laughs> has just begun. Amen? And so many times we make the process so much longer than what God intends it to be. Amen? Because we don't understand it. Sainthood is not based on what you do. Sainthood is based on what He did. Amen? It's what based on what He did. And so once we get into this process... What we learn is he's not just after my spirit anymore. He's already got it. I've accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, and I love him with all my heart. Now he wants your soul. Yeah. Now he wants your mind. He wants you to think like him. He wants you to choose like he would choose. He wants you to feel like he feels. He wants to live that life through you. And it's only through that process. And when the spirit and the soul connect up together, the body will follow. You don't have to worry about the, bo the body. Amen? And we're going to break that down here in a few minutes. God wants access to your members. He wants access. He knows you love Him, but can you give Him your mind? He knows you love Him. Can you give Him your emotions? Can you allow Him to be the one that feels for you? Not you feel. You feel what He he feels. Amen? It doesn't mean you don't have emotions. It means your emotions are godly. It means at times, amen, when you want to cry, you can cry, but you need to know they're His tears. Amen? And not just yours by yourself. So what happens is, the Bible tells us that we're sanctified by truth. 
We're sanctified by what is in the Bible that's truth. Not what we think is truth. What is really truth according to doctrine. Okay? And so all he's doing is he's saying, man, you got saved. You're with me now. I want you to follow me. He's never leaving you. He's never forsaking you. But he's not following you now. You're supposed to be following him. He's the one that's supposed to be taking the lead in your life. Amen? And through that, there is going to be a journey. And that journey is, uh, you know what? You may leave him a million times, but he's never going to leave you. And all he's doing is he's wanting you to come back to him. Every time we miss it, I'm not against anybody missing it. That's what Andy and I talk about all the time. We're not against people missing it. We're against people that won't own it when they miss it and get back up and dust off their knees and keep on going. Amen? That's what we're against. So there are three things that happens doctrinally when you get saved. And you've heard these words before. The first word would be justification. Amen? Sanctification. And glorification. All three of these things we have to have as believers Amen. in our lives. When we became justified, I always look at how in the world do you explain justified? Just as if I never done it. It's the easiest way to remember what justification means. Just as if I never did it. Just as if I never sinned. Jesus Christ paid that price for you. That when you accept him as Lord and Savior, you have now have justification. It is as if you never did it because he paid the price for what you did. Okay? Glorification comes when we see him, we become like him because we see him for who he is. Our final glorification will be when we are no longer here on this earth, but now we have went to heaven and now we are in a glorified body. Amen? And total glorification will come to us when we reach heaven. And in the meantime, sanctification is what God is working out in you every day of your life. And it's powerful and people don't understand this because people can get saved and then they mess up and they don't want to fess up because they just blame themselves because they don't know who they are in Christ and they don't know how to repent of that, take ownership of it, put it back underneath the blood of Jesus and pick up and go back on. Why? Because he's still sanctifying my soul. He's still sanctifying the things that I'm messing up on. So what happens is in justification, your spirit was dealt with. In justification, your spirit is dealt with. In sanctification, your soul is dealt with. And in glorification, your body will be dealt with. Amen? And when you get to heaven, you won't have any issues. So this whole time, we are being called to replicate Jesus on this earth. That is what we're called to do. What is he after in your life? He wants you to be like Jesus. Yes. He wants you to be like Jesus. He doesn't want you to go through the motions. You know, for years, everybody wore the t-shirts and the armbands. WWJD. What would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? Yeah. Well, you can know what Jesus would do and not do it. Right. That's right. <laughs> you can know what he would do. I know all kinds of things Jesus would do. And there would be moments in my life, I, Jesus said, what would, you, what would Jesus do? Jesus would say, forgive. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Not happening. Not on this earth. You know? I mean, there's all kinds of things. So this sanctification is saying, I got to be like him. I got to do what he wants to do. Let's go to John 15, verses 1 through 4. It says, I am the true vine. This is Jesus talking. And my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Say sanctification. What's he doing? A process. You're growing in him. You're now, he's the vine. You're now in that. You're one of those branches that's in him. And when you're not bearing fruit, he's coming. <laughs> 
<laughs> and he's going to pluck that thing away. Amen? And when you're growing fruit, he's going to cut that thing away anyway because he's going to cut it back. What is he doing? He's taking us through a process. Why? Because he's after something in our lives. And it's that we would become holy as he is holy. Amen? He says, you're already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Yeah. Justification. Yeah. You're already clean because I've saved you. I've already spoken to you. You're already one of mine. But because you're already one of mine don't mean everything in your life is perfect. Right. It means he's still working on me yeah. to make me what I ought to be. Amen. Come on. That song ought to be in our hearts. Amen. Not just for children. <laughs> Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Wow. Yeah. This is a beautiful scripture of sanctification and justification. And we have probably, you may never have looked at it that way. But you know what? He literally says, he's the vine. He's the one we've got to be like. You are the branches. Why would he call himself a vine? Because when we really think about it, a vine hangs down. Okay? And if a vine produces fruit, that fruit is hanging down. He is the vine. Where is he? Where is Jesus right now? He's not here walking among us. The Holy Spirit's been sent back here to work among us. He's at the right hand of the Father. The vine is in heaven wanting to hang down and produce fruit on this earth. And what he is hanging down is what has to look like him from heaven. Amen? That's why we have to look at that and really say, whoa, Jesus is not walking around the earth doing anything today, people. He's done. He literally said on the cross, it is finished. Right. It is finished. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and the only thing the Bible tells us He's doing for us right now is He is interceding for us. He is praying for you. He's praying for you. But everything that's being done here on this earth, man is doing. The Holy Spirit's direction is speaking through men. It's drawing hearts, and we are to be the ones now that are the fruit and walk as Jesus would walk on this earth and replicate Him. So why do we need to be sanctified? Because for God to get done, what He needs to do on this earth, He needs the fruit down here that is literally able, someone is able to reach out, pick your fruit, bite into it, and it not be bitter, but it be better. Amen? That it not be sour that it would be sweet to be able to taste. Why? Because the only way that this world can see Jesus is how they see you. His people. Amen? The Holy Spirit working with us. Help us Jesus. Amen? 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For He made Him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf that we might become the righteousness of God in in him. Yes. Oh, you just think you're holy. No, I don't think I'm holy. I know I'm in All him. Right, well, now, come on. I know I have received a gift of righteousness. Well, you're arrogant in that. No, I'm not. I know who I am. I know who I belong to. I know that outside of him, I am nothing. Amen. I am a filthy, dirty sinner doing nothing but the things I did before I got saved. But now that I am saved, I know who I am. Amen? When we go back and we look, I have to know that that, that, that is the truth. Why? Because it's the anchor that holds me down when I mess up. It's what keeps me stable. It's what keeps me at His feet. It's what keeps me in tears going, Father, forgive me. I didn't mean to do that, God. Lord, oh, I take total ownership of that, God. Yes, I did mean to do it. I did it on purpose. I made that decision to do that. Amen? You come on like he don't know. Yeah. Like he don't know. Yeah. You know? You ever had God come 
come down literally almost hear an audible voice it would sound like my mother Karen Sue don't do that again because <laughs> when God starts calling me Karen Sue I know my mom's been praying again amen because she's the only one that calls me that amen I have I've had God come down once I've done something and I knew it was wrong and I knew it wasn't right and in that same and I've just heard that little voice say don't you ever do that again and man it just and you know what it doesn't upset me it doesn't make me feel like he hates me right, right. I know who I am in him so I now can go right back to the father and say, I'm so sorry I'm so sorry God I'm so sorry daddy God I, I didn't I didn't mean to Lord forgive me God help me in this area what 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 is he doing he's showing us where we are in our process wow. he's not beating us up mm -hmm. see it took me years as a Christian to understand God wasn't pointing his finger at me yeah. everything I did wrong I was God was in my that's not what God does when you know who you are in him this is what he does mm -hmm. come on you messed up again come back why because I need to clean you up. Does he need to save me all over again? No. I'm already in him. But I got to work on that thing. Because girl, you got a long way to go in your process. Amen. How many of you can say, I haven't arrived yet. It's who I am. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You have no goodness of your own. It is only in him. Amen. And that's why the scripture that says in him you live and move and have your being is so, it's more than a song. It's more than a song we used to sing. In him you live, you move, you have your being. That's what it is. You have your being. You're justified, you're glorified, and you're sanctified when we're doing things right in Him. But we've got to have an understanding of biblical doctrine. I have to show you this because you're not going to get through your process and understand God and His goodness and His love if we don't understand doctrine of what it is. What in the world are we doing? You watch people get saved and then they're gone. Why? Because they didn't understand. Amen. They missed the teaching on the process. Yeah. Yeah. They missed the teaching on the process. So you can't enter into the process until you decide to commit to the process and trust the process. Can you trust that what he started working in you, he's able to complete it? Amen. Have you ever been in a process with God and you've messed it up so many times and you've fallen back so many times and you keep returning to that vomit so many times and then you literally think that you're going to, well, you're, you know, God's going to give up on you. Guess what? He's never Never going to give up on you. Amen? Until the day you have made your final last breath and you have drawn it. It is only at that moment, amen, that there is no hope for you. Amen? We have to believe in it. We have to commit to it. He just wants to make you like Jesus. But there are a couple things when we commit to it that we have to have an understanding. See, you don't hear a lot of this teaching in church anymore. Because we're just motivating everybody, telling them how great they are. Let me just say this to you, because he said it to me. There ain't nothing good in any of you. There's nothing good in me. There's nothing good in anybody. He is the only thing that's good. Jesus wouldn't even allow them to call Jesus good. He didn't allow them to do that. He said, there is none good but my Father. There is none good but my Father. And so we have to learn what it is that we're doing. And so we have to settle these things in our heart if we can trust, to be able to trust the process of what he's doing in us. The first thing that we have to do is to know this. The day you give your life to Jesus Christ is the day your own life ends. Yes. Wow. Yeah. It ends. Come on. You die on that cross with him. In him. It's not what you want anymore. Oh, man. Oh, I am not going to sell a lot of tapes today. Amen? Not going to be happening today. Why? Because the church doesn't want to hear this anymore. Because we become our own gods. It's all about what we want. 
what we can attain, how successful we can be, what, what we can look like. Amen? That, that's, what, that's what it is turned into. And it's not what it is at all. He said, the day you accepted me is the day you die to yourself. Everything you are, everything you're not, everything you want, everything you don't want, it's now His way and only His way. So when Andy's up here doing his series that he did recently, doing it God's way, is that offensive to people? Absolutely. Why? Because I'll do it my way. Wow. Yeah. Your life ended. The second thing we have to settle in our heart is you are now crucified to the world. Amen. See, when I truly gave my life completely over to Jesus Christ, I lost interest in the world. Amen. It didn't matter to me anymore. That's right. Still doesn't matter to me anymore. Are you upset about all this stuff going on? Uh -uh. I know what the Bible says. You think we're living in the last days? Yes, I do. You worried about it? Because uh -uh. I know what the Bible says. Amen. I got peace. I got hope. Well, do you know what's going to happen? No, I don't. It's okay. It's okay. Well, what are you going to do? You say, come. And they tell you, you're not going to buy. You're not going to sell. You're not going to be able to go to the store. You're not going to be able to do anything unless you have the mark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I ain't worry about it. Nope. Why? Because I know what the Bible says. Yes. I know what it says. Yes. I've lost interest in all that. All the stuff that's in this world, we lose interest in. But you know what happens? Many Christians do that. Come on. But let me tell you where you get stuck. The world loses interest in you. Wow. Yeah. Wow. The world loses interest in you. And now you're not popular anymore. Your friends have walked away from you. They're harassing you at your job because you're now one of those crazy fanatical Christians. Well, we know what a fanatical Christian is. It's just someone that loves Jesus more than you do. Amen? That's what a fanatical Christian is. I just happen to love him more than you do. And we can't take the rejection from the world. Amen? Because they lost interest in what you have no interest in anymore to begin with. Yeah. It's like, well, I'll lose all my friends. Hallelujah. Praise God. You probably need to. <laughs> mm -hmm. Isn't that the truth? Yes. Because my Bible also says that holiness is not contagious but unholiness is. Yes. So hook yourself up with unholiness and guess what's going to happen? It's a leaking in somewhere. Yes. Amen? Lord. Hallelujah. So this sanctification process, we have to be able to settle in our hearts that we're to be dead to this world. Does it mean we don't live in this world? It, no, it doesn't. We're to love this world. He came to rescue those that are perishing. He didn't call me to be like them. He didn't call me to separate myself from them because I think I'm better than they are. He said, you know what? you got to be dead to your own ways. Amen? you got to love them. you gotta, you got to minister to them. It doesn't mean, you know what? Okay, here we go. In church, we stand at the door. Are you saved? Check mark. Go to the left. Are you saved? I'm not sure. Well, you might stay in the middle. Are you saved? No, I'm a heathen. Go sit on the left. That's not what he's talking about. But, but, I've watched people misunderstand sanctification, and now they're too good for anybody. Yes. They won't even do... Oh, you sinner, you. Look down my long religious doctrinal nose and say, psh, psh, shame on you. You should know better than that. You should be holy like I'm holy. Seriously? You see why sanctification's got a bad rap? <laughs> Have you ever done something wrong as a Christian? Oh, come on. I got the hat, t-shirt, the whole nine yards on this one, okay? I, I, I'm going to try my hardest not to get on my soapbox right here, okay? God, help me. Help me, Jesus. <laughs> Sanctification means you're gradually becoming. You're becoming the opposite of common. You're becoming set apart, the works being done in you. Have you ever had someone <laughs> that did you wrong? Or when you've done wrong, and that person will mark you for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 
you were in the middle of your process and they wrote you off in the middle of your process because they may have already been through that process may never have experienced the things you experienced may be looking down their noses at you and now they've wrote you off I can tell you right now there are people right here in this town that have wrote me off for 30 years I don't know who they they wouldn't know me today if they if they had a conversation with me why because when I was in my process amen they wrote me off Come on, church. Be careful with this message. Be careful with this message. Because I'm only talking to you about your process. Leave Jim's process out of it. Leave Linda's process out of it. Leave Marion's process out of it. Leave Amanda's process out of it. I'm talking about your process. I'm talking about what you're going through. Where you're gradually walking. Because not all of us are at the same level. Some people may be down here and they may be making more progress with their process than you that are up here trying to deal with all your holier than thou attitudes, amen, that we have with people, and we got to be careful. This church don't write people off. Amen. We'll correct the error. Amen. We'll speak the truth. But if you're in a process, we are praying for you. Amen. I am not judging you. I have no right to judge you. Amen. Amen. I want to see your life being gradually becoming more and more like Jesus. I was in a situation yesterday with someone. And this person's you know, coming to church and right in the middle of conversation, they bleeped out a word in front of me and the look on their face was like, oh, it's the preacher lady. Uh -huh. <laughs> Look what I just... And I looked at him and I said, it's okay. Uh -huh. It just takes time. Yeah. Yeah. It takes time. Why? Because when that's all you've said for the last 15 years, what's going to come out of your mouth? Wow. It's not going to be something that's holy. I didn't get born again shouting, hallelujah, praise you, Jesus. <laughs> and our becoming more like Jesus is that we become a little more merciful with people that are going through some tough times and trying to get through their process. People are going to mess up. Please don't hold them to that place for the rest of their lives. Amen. Have some mercy, church. Have some mercy. We have to remind ourselves the process in me did not stop because those people wrote me off. Amen. Hallelujah. He still loved me. He didn't let go of me. He still was working on me. Amen. And because they wrote me off, it's okay. I release them and I forgive them. Because you know what? It's a process they'll have to go through at some point in their lives. And many of them have had to go through that process. But at the same time, I can look now and say, thank you, God, for that process. Thank you. And you know what? I found myself doing the same wow. thing. I, here, here's, how we, here's how we start. Because we, I'm, tr I'm trying to dummy this down to where we understand it in real life. It's all right. Here's me. This is what we do. This is how we write people off. I'm done. Yeah. I'm done with it. Mm -hmm. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Now, you have to say I'm done with an attitude. Oh, yeah. I'm done. <laughs> Got it? I'm done. Yeah. Has anybody ever done that? Is it just me? Am I the only one that says I'm done? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Am I the only one in this room? He says, I am done. <laughs> and you know what? When I do that and I get in my prayer closet every time yeah. and the Lord starts to deal with me, I literally say the words of Isaiah in, in 6, Whoa, I'm undone. I'm undone. <laughs> I'm undone. That's good. I'm undone. Because I can't tell you how many times I've wrote people off in my heart. I may not. I may not write you off to your face. Uh -huh. yep. I'm done. Yeah. 
I'm not dealing with it anymore. I'm not dealing with it anymore. Where's mercy? Where's grace? Where's allowing someone and extending a hand? Amen. Oh, it's so, it, it teaches so easy and it lives so hard. It really, really does. They don't even know that you've already graduated through that process. But they'll still treat you like you were 30 years ago. And how many of you know you can't grow in that? Amen. You can't grow in that. And sometimes in our walk with God, we have to let go of people that won't let us let go of our past. Well, no. We have to let go of it. Because there's a new day, a new chapter, a new season, amen, that God has for each and every one of us. And looking backwards, shrinking back to go again. I mean, I'm sorry. It's like, it, it, and it's nothing personal. It's like, you know what? I want to become what Christ wants me to be. And if I can't do that in your presence, it's okay. We'll agree to split ways. We'll agree to go a different direction. You know, I love you and I'll be praying for you, but I can't hang with you if you're going to keep reminding me of who I was 30 years ago. I want to be around people that show me what I look like today in the mirror, truth of the mirror, and I want to sh people to show me what I can be as I step into my tomorrow, my next day, my next month, or my next year. Does that make sense to anybody this morning? Hallelujah. John 12, 36. We made light of this um, just a few weeks ago, and I want to, to hit into this again today. Hallelujah. I may not get through part one. How? <laughs> While you have the light, what's the light? Jesus. While you have the light, believe in the light. That you may become sons of light. These things Jesus spoke and departed and was hidden from them. So Jesus is with his disciples and he's literally giving them instructions. And he's telling them, while I'm with you, disciples, while I'm with you, believe in me. Amen? So that you may become sons of me. Yeah. See, you've got to be able to believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Know you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Yes. And know that because of that, the revelation in our minds and in our hearts is that so that we can become. Not so that we are. It didn't say that we are sons of God in here. It says we are becoming sons of God. What does becoming mean? It means it's a process. Yes. We are on our way to becoming the sons of God. Amen? You become who you are through your processes. But if we don't trust God with our processes, we will never become what he wants us to be. Amen. Amen. Sons of light. In John 1.12, it says this, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. He gave us the power to become. But the only way the power works is if we understand the process Amen. of sanctification. Yeah. Yeah. Am I, making, is it, am I, am I yeah. simplifying it enough that we can get some everyday understanding of what it is we're supposed to be doing? Yeah. We are Christians. Because of what he did, and we have accepted him as Lord and Savior. And we are in the process of becoming like him. Amen? We're becoming like he is. And here's the thing about it. Do you have any area? I don't care if you've been a Christian for 50 years. Do you have any area in your life right now that you can become more like Jesus? I could pull out a machine gun list right now for myself. Da, 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 Amen? Seriously. Do we have any area? Or are we really so full of ourselves that we think we've arrived? Oh, help me, Jesus. 
Now, I want to just you to think about this for a minute. To become means you have the right to change. Wow. It means you have the right to change. Now, this is going to stick with me, okay? God is not interested in you changing. God is interested in you becoming. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Wow. Yeah, that's good. Because if you change, you can always go back to what you were. Yeah. That's good. But if you become, you can't go back. That's good. Amen. So when he tells us in Romans... Not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. When he speaks that to us in Romans, we immediately think little kids transformers. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. I was a car, and now I'm a superpower. Amen? And now I'm a car again, and now I'm a superpower. That's what we think in our natural minds, because that's the world we live in. But that's not what that word means. That word transform is metamorphosis. Yeah. It means that little caterpillar yep. that became a butterfly. Yep. And once that caterpillar become a butterfly, it can never go back to being a caterpillar again. It has become something different. So we're preaching change, 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 change. And maybe we should be saying, become, 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 become. Let me become more like Jesus. Let me become created in his image and in his likeness. Amen? So what happens in that metamorphosis? We know from a little caterpillar, they go through all these stages before they become this beautiful butterfly. But the most crucial part of their transformation, their metamorphosis that happens, is when they get and they spin that cocoon in that dark, dark place, they begin to spin. And their world goes out of control. Ever felt there? Uh, I don't have a clue what God is doing in my life right now. I feel like I'm in the dark. I don't know what's going on. My head is spinning. Everything's going. It doesn't make any sense to anybody. Guess what you are? You're spinning in that cocoon and all that stuff and you're surrounding yourself in a dark dark tomb why because he's wanting you to die so you can become that little caterpillar once it goes through that process of death and it goes through that process of darkness and it goes through that process of all that confusion and this didn't make any sense I thought I was a caterpillar I thought I was a caterpillar I thought I was a caterpillar and now I don't know who I am I thought I got saved, but now I don't even know what saved means. Anybody ever been there? Come on, we make church so crazy. It's no wonder the world don't want any part of it. Because it's really simple when we break it down and understand it and can put it in layman's terms. You know? Man, have you ever been in that place? I'm going crazy. I'm losing my mind. That's okay. It's just something you're becoming. Amen. Amen? It's something that you're becoming. And so, that butterfly only came out when the caterpillar part of him died. Wow. <clears throat> and what he was, he's no more, yeah. and now he's become. Yeah. See, your old man is dead in Christ. Yeah. Amen. And through what he did now, you have the power to become. Yes. And once you become, you don't have to go back. Yeah. Amen. Unless you just think you changed, but you didn't become. Good word. The world knows how to change. You can go to any psychologist, psychiatrist, any counselor and have all the therapy you need and they will teach you to change your thinking and to change your mind, but they don't have the power to make you become. No. Because they don't have the Holy Spirit. And so I'm not against counseling. You can get counseling for understanding, but if you don't put the Holy Spirit working in us, through us, on that thing, you're just changing. That's why some Someone that is an alcoholic can change and not be an alcoholic. Yeah. 
but they can't become until God touches their hearts. Amen? They can't become. And so we have to have an understanding. If you're just changing, you can go back. But once you really understand transformation, you're never going to go back. Why? Because the door is shut behind you. There's no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Why? Because there's nothing to go back to once you've become. Amen. There's nothing to go back to once you've become. So when you leave the process and the moment of justification, you got saved, you accepted Him as Lord and Savior, you now have an understanding you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It's just as if none of your sins ever happened. Wow. When you leave there, God will then lead you to the place where you have to die. Wow. He died for you. And now you're going to have to die. Not in the natural. You have to die to your want. You have to die to your ways. You have to die to what you think. Die to your belief systems. Amen? And <laughs> if any man follows me, Jesus said he has to take up his cross and follow me. There is a life Jesus has for you that is different than from what you're living right now. Every one of us. As we become. As we get on that process and we become. And so we misunderstand the process. Because the process can be a struggle. Okay? No one said it was easy. No one said it looked churchy. <laughs> it never said that in the Bible. We are taking our old man that we have to die to and now we've become a new creation in Christ Jesus and we got to learn how to walk on this earth as a new creation and as a citizen of heaven on this earth looking away from all those things. Because see, there are certain things that come to your mind. When you're in the middle of a struggle of sanctification, there was a day in my mind where money finances was the first thing on my mind. Today it's the last thing on my mind. Yeah. Amen? There was a day when being successful in the corporate world was the first thing on my mind. Today it's the last thing on my mind. It doesn't matter anymore. Why? Because I'm on my road to becoming. Amen? There was a day, okay, when fitting in with the crowd and not losing my friends was on the forefront of my mind when I was having a conversation with someone. But today it's the last thing on my mind because the only one I'm here to please is Him. Amen? It's Him. It's Jesus. And so God's looking at all those places on on the inside of us that he's trying to sanctify and he's saying you know what we're going to sanctify this area we're going to work on this area I'm going to pinpoint this process in you and we're going to work through it Karen and when we get through it amen you're going to look more like me amen. so what is God after he's after those things in your life that don't look like him that's what he's after and he's going to use this process of sanctification for you to be able to get there amen so I want to go back. I'm going to stop right there because I've still got three more pages and you're looking at your watch because the chicken may be cooking or you got dinner plans. Amen. Hallelujah. First Thessalonians. Let's go back and look at it. 523. It says now. Say right now. Right now. May the God of peace God. himself. Yes. Not you doing it through somebody else. Let God do it. Yes. Sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I don't have this upstairs, but I'm going to read you the next verse as we end. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. He will do it. If we will just yield our members to him and know what he is coming after in our life. Amen? He is faithful and he 
will do what he told us he would do. We just have to understand we are not changing. We are becoming more like Jesus. Amen? Each and every day. And with that, we can celebrate. Amen? And we can find a place that even in our grieving with our struggles, we can find a place where we can have both of them in one hand. Amen? And it all works together for the good of everything that he's doing on the inside of us. Amen? Stand to your feet this morning, afternoon, evening. I'm so confused. I don't even know where I am. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. And let me remind you, you don't have holiness to give God. He wants to give holiness to you. Wow, that's good. It says, worship the Lord in the beauty of His holiness, not ours. Amen. Wow. So when we're in the middle of our process, we can still lift our hands and give Him our worship. Because it's not our holiness. It's His holiness. Amen? And that's why that we're here. Amen? God, help us, Jesus. Help us to sanctify areas in our life that you're pinpointing right now. Father, I just pray right now that you're going to show each and every person in this place this morning an area of their lives that they can become more like you. That they can die in one area to themselves. And that when you raise them back up and take them through the process of sanctification, they're going to look like you. They're going to talk like you. They're going to walk like you. They're going to love like you. They're going to have your peace. They're going to be fruit on this earth. Yes, they can give to someone in need. And Father, I just thank you for every process you've ever walked me through. Release and forgive anyone that never understood my process. That wrote me off. They didn't know what they were doing because they didn't know your ways. But God, deal with me today. Deal with each one of us today as individuals. What is it that he's showing you right now? He'll reveal it to you right now. What is it you need in your life to look more like Jesus? And whatever that thing is, surrender it to him. Just say, Lord, I give you this. If it's greed, I give it to you, God. If it's anger, I give it to you, God. If it's pride, I give it to you, God. Just I want to be more like you. Take me through the process. Help me to trust you in my process. I want to become... I want to become just like you. Show us right now, God. Each one. Holy Spirit, speak to each person. And let us become more and more like you, Jesus. continual and it's more than likely going to be gradual but we're trusting you through it all my mind my will and my emotions let them be sanctified by a holy God today have your will and have your way in my life total surrender to you total surrender to you today in Jesus name can you feel just feel his presence his heaviness if he's speaking to you grab that to your heart don't walk out of here and forget that area that he told you he wanted you to work on it starts with totally surrendering totally surrendering you can't change it on your own but he can change it